Surya versus Paramedicogenesis. Today we have to discuss about in this video pre oxygenation. Pre oxygenation means to administration of the oxygen just to prior to the induction of general anesthesia to increase the oxygen reserve in our body. So, in this video, we learn about the pre oxygenation, CAP apnea time, what is the method of the pre oxygenation, what is the mechanism behind the pre oxygenation, and some special situation you should pre oxygenate the patients properly. So, before start this session, let's intro. Pre-oxygenation. We know that pre-oxygenation means the so administration of the oxygen prior to the induction of general anesthesia to increase the oxygen reserve in our body. So the main aim of pre-oxygenation is to increase the safe apnea time. So now our mind so one question is arised what is the safe apnea time so safe apnea time is nothing but the duration of the time patient can't breathe patient is apneic in some time so in this time patient saturation is more than 90 percentage okay so patient saturation is more than 90 percentage even patient in apneic so that time is called safe apnea time. So duration of the time, patient SPO to maintain more than 90 percentage, even cessation of the breathing, that means apnea. So that is the safe apnea time. So main aim of pre-oxygenation is to increase the safe apnea time. So to increase the safe apnea time will help to prevent the hypoxia between the induction and intubation. In some dreadful complication like cannot ventilate, cannot intubate situation, that will help in uh, that situation. So, pre-oxygenation is very important. So, patient has to be pre-oxygenation adequately. So, we didn't know that the complication of the patient. So, then the methods. What is the method used to pre-oxygenation the patient correctly? So, four methods is here. So, first method is tidal volume. To replace the oxygen in tidal volume breaths and the vital capacity. So, vital capacity, we know that the maximum breathing capacity is the vital capacity. In vital capacity breath, there is a two method is here. So, one is a four breath in 30 seconds and another is eight breaths in 60 seconds. So, most commonly used method is four breath in 30 second method is most commonly used pre-oxygenation method. So, and then and third one is the CPAP and BiPAP. That means continuous positive airway pressure or bi-level positive airway pressure. And the last one is Thrive. Thrive is nothing but is the transnational humidified insufflation of ventilatory exchange that means it's otherwise known as jet ventilation method so this four method is mainly used the commonly used method is four breath in 30 second method vital capacity breath to replace the oxygen in vital capacity breath so what is the mechanism behind the uh, pre-oxygenation so pre-oxygenation so assume that is our lung okay so we have to administration the oxygen so increase the oxygen so lung have a lot of nitrogen so oxygen will inside the nitrogen will be going outside so that is called denitrogenation so increase the oxygen in alveoli to increase the partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli will be increased so that will increase to safe apnea time that safe apnea time will it prevent the hypoxia between the induction and intubation. So now, what is the end point of pre-oxygenation? We administration the oxygen 100% FiO2. So we know that the end point, we have a gas monitoring system. So ETO2 value is more than 90% because of increased partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli will be increased. That will be increased the 90% of ETO2. That means expired air have a more than 90% of oxygen value and nitro oxide value is less than 5 percentage in in this situation it's a end point of the pre-oxygenation now there's some special situation you should pre-oxygenate the patient is properly correctly and effectively okay so the so special situations are first one is rsi so rsi or mrsi mrsi means modified rapid rapid sequence induction and rsi means rapid sequence induction so that means the patient have a full stomach patient uh, so this patient have an increased risk of aspiration so to prevent this aspiration we have an intubation technique it's called rsi okay so in rsi we have to pre-oxygenate the patient in correctly and correct time okay then the pediatric patients the pediatric patients have a less amount of tidal volume and less frc but have a more metabolic rate so oxygen demand in our body in pediatric patient is more increased so we 
to make to prevent the hypoxia in pediatric patient we have a pre oxygenate adequately and properly then the obese patient so obesity obesity patient have a low frc value that means functional residual capacity so to increase the um, increase the oxygen reserve on our body we pre oxygenation in 20 degree head up position so in obesity patients should correctly pre oxygenation properly then the pregnant patients also pregnant patients also high risk of chance of aspiration so pre oxygenation correct properly then the sepsis the sepsis patient have a increased metabolism and low cardiac output state so oxygen demand our in our body is so increase so pre oxygenation is must correct properly so in five special situation pre oxygenation is no compromise correctly administration of the oxygen is very important so hope this video will know about the pre oxygenation properly i will meet you another video as soon as possible until signing of jerry askan this is paramedico jenses